good morning to all i mean ladies and gentlemen madam i i think uh, i hand over to you i uh, i give you this uh, what uh, we call make you the host okay, that would be good so that any participants who come uh, they can i mean you can allow them to join and then sure. at the same time you can make host right madam yes sir i think uh, that way anupama and yes, meena karmakar you are there listening yes sir yes sir okay now uh, handing over to ms vandana tyagi for the class paper 5 thank you right? sir thank you madam good morning see you continue please Sure. Sure. So this is the presentation which I had. Uh, so how are you all today? First, before we get into. Good, good, ma'am. Uh, so did I? I think Rupesh ji attended. Meena also attended. So yes. did you attend? Did all of you attend the last class we did? Ma'am, Meena, this I last time I actually I was not able to attend the session. Okay, okay. Anupama ji, I think you were there. So, Meena, for uh, for everyone's benefit, if you could probably give a quick introduction about yourself in terms of. what do you do uh, what you had been doing so far or what are your aspirations and what are your expectations from this course uh, good morning ma'am uh, meena this side from delhi mm -hmm. uh, actually i'm working uh, into a, a life insurance industry and uh, in training uh, training do domain i am from 2008 mm -hmm. okay so i'm working as a sales trainer ma'am okay. in insurance industry very dynamic very dynamic it's a very dynamic and aggressive people <laughs> <laughs> and selling insurance is not easy uh, initially mm. joined as in uh, sales only mm -hmm. then, uh, some uh, company trainer pushed me into training mm -hmm. so they suggested me you can uh, better pursue career in training instead of uh, only in sales because mm -hmm. training is basically uh, both blended both matlab training and sales you can do all together so please uh, if you come and join us in training so that's why they just push me to the training and after that uh, from 2008 till now i am into training and working with hdfc life currently mm -hmm. and almost all of the domain i have worked in uh, insurance industry uh, direct telemedical uh, tele vertical direct vertical Mm -hmm. and bank uh, defense also i have taken care of under half year mm -hmm. so i just moved to different cans and have seen the living style of their uh, cans how they uh, work how they live mm -hmm. their, their life how they the life of uh, our army personals mm -hmm. so i have seen everything so wonderful yes i learned a lot in this in this industry Mm -hmm. because in this industry you meet different people mm -hmm. with different thought different mindset so mm -hmm. i like the industry and still into the same industry that's why from so long wonderful wonderful it's great to hear i mean hear your story it's it's wonderful because i some i i also believe that people who are best who can do the best say can become the best trainers as well because uh, you understand the other person's perspective and you understand how does it happen and you can actually you know uh, talk about the nuances and you can build the nuances of it in terms of practical uh, practical reality while doing the trainings so and i'm sure that with post covid insurance industry has boomed a lot of people have become conscious that uh, even if they did not do the sales so aggressively last year still people were keen of you know going in buying term insurance or taking a medical insurance so people have become very uh, you know conscious in terms of how right. should they yes how should how should they leverage insurance and it's more so a problem in india i think outside since it's a mandate 
So people are, uh, you know, the penetration is definitely much Correct. higher. But Correct. there is huge scope. Huge scope in so, India. Uh, I am the first person who took work from home because uh, when lockdown started before that, I started working from home mm -hmm. because I've gone through with the cold and cough. So mm -hmm. suggested uh, by the seniors that don't come to office if something happens. But somehow after a week, <laughs> lockdown came and uh, situations are totally different that time because before that we were doing physical sessions and all and uh, then you move to the another virtual platforms it's not very easy for everyone uh, as a person if i feel yes i can do but the distributors uh, are not very much uh, aware of that and our distributors are at the age of 60 65 plus also so uh, tell them how to join how to do these uh, virtual sessions uh, links how they join how they download it's not very easy in first quarter but yes uh, Later on, we feel it's the best op opportunity for us to continue with this uh, virtual platform. So initially we started uh, with Zoom, then we come to Google Meet and now we are doing session, all sessions on uh, Microsoft Teams. Mm. So uh, all the sessions, even inductions, employees induction, uh, distributors trainings, everything is uh, even our uh, assessments has been done by virtually. True. So every year we just assessed on our training skills and knowledge skills. Mm -hmm. From last three years, company has promoted. And due to this, uh, someone, uh, my daughter is also completed this uh, last year ISTD. And uh, my yeah. boss uh, and my daughter pushed me, ke, please go ahead with this uh, training, ISTD uh, training. And you learned a lot. True. So the reason being of joining this and I'm uh, really enjoying Wonderful. the learning of uh, ISCD. What, yeah. I, what I have learned, I am just uh, enhancing my knowledge, I can say. So it's good for me. It's a very good platform for me because it's virtually and it's easy for me as a uh, working professional. It's very easy for me to join and uh, attend the sessions and uh, attend the exam is very easy for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you're learning from experience. You're not learning from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so we all now know each other. We Anupamaji was there. Sandeep, Sandeep was also there last time. Uh, so we are six participants now. So what we talked last time, last class, that there are different generations of work. Everyone's perception is different. So it's extremely important that, uh, you know, we are able to include people from where they're coming. And that's how we, they can, uh, their learning would be sticky to them. What is a facilitation process? It's, it's actually you share your opinion, guidance, experiences and expertise to achieve a common goal and you agree on an action plan. We talked about why should we facilitate? Uh, we, we facilitate to change your behavior, to get or given information, or to ensure there is an understanding, or to get you know to get action on something. Facilitator plays an extremely important role because uh, you, the, as per the principles of adult learning, you got to accommodate different styles of learning so that you know you're able to include people in your conversation. As we all know, adults come with a lot of knowledge and experience. So it's, I mean, they have first barrier that uh, they already know a lot. So what you got to be knowing that you got to connect their, your, uh, your way of teaching or your conceptual understanding with something what they already know. And that's when they would be willing to listen to you. So it's extremely important. How do you bring best in people? How do you help them to achieve the results? How do you use a range of skills as in, you know, behavioral understanding their own behavior, bringing in examples will be more relevant to them. And you process on how how they can possibly you know take it back to their workplaces. So we talked about you know what are the skills of a facilitator. You should be uh, you should be listening well. Uh, you should be questioning uh, at the right junctures to ensure that your listening is complete and you're able to you know give them rec or recommend them or bring them to a common set of actionables. You should be participative. You should be empathizing. You should be leading. Uh, the discussion you should not let you know you know there are a lot at times when you have a lot of talkative participants so you're all over the place so it's you got to ensure that you are responsible for that kind of experience which you're giving to people in that setting 
So you got to ensure that you know you're leading people to a common goal, and you you set up the objective at the start of an uh, training, but at the same time you don't let any other uncertainty take it anywhere. You lead it, you take it, you close it, and you move to the next step. You got to ensure that you follow time management. You got to be accepting others. You should not be judging. At the same time, you should be listening to people in terms of where are they coming from. You take the examples from their work setting so that it's more relevant in terms of case studies or role plays. You should be problem solving. You should be resolving conflict, or probably you know trying to ensure that if that conflict. So if you have a couple of people who have, you know, who have a conflict before coming into this training. either you take permission from them that you know if the conflict is not pressing enough let it you know resolve maybe after the training so if you take an agreement from them can this wait till we finish the conceptual understanding of this training or try through your own examples uh, you know try and resolve that conflict then and there so there are multiple uh, you know uh, so it has to be a trainer is actually a multifaceted person who needs to ensure that you know uh, who this person is including everyone as the way they want and you are very very you know sharp and observant in terms of non verbal cues uh, you're looking at their barriers because at times you are facilitating a cross cultural group so you got to be understanding what are the cross cultural nuances sometimes different cultures have a different meaning to different words and different body languages so you got to be understanding all that you got to be asking open questions to set up a credibility you could be asking probing questions all your conversation or probably feedback which you are trying to give should be in a star format which is giving a person a situation giving them a task giving them an action and result so probably if if i if you're giving me a feedback i picked up this example in last conversation that if you're giving me a feedback say on my presentation skill you can't simply say that i'm good or bad you got to be telling me that if i if my wish i mean if my visuals are not in sync with words i'm saying if my visuals are not appealing if my visuals are redundant or if my data is you know is placed at multiple in the multiple uh, tables or the tables are not readable so you got to be specific if you are telling me good or bad you can tell me a situation you tell me a task and you also help empathize in terms of one when i am concerned that you would not be seen in the right light or you would not be seen as credible with uh, with a client and that's how i'm saying this so you you should show you should also try and incorporate the conceptual understanding try and help them at first probe them by asking giving them the right set of questions that they are able to find the answers or they are able to improve on their own if they are not able to improve on their own so probably a couple of more questions or else you give them a ready made solution and then you then you show them a concern or empathy that you are concerned about their own growth or their own perception or their own credibility in this situation and this will impact their their perception in the longer run so that's how you create a sense of urgency in terms of helping them understand that you are concerned about their learning about their perception about the role it will play in their growth be conscious of the non verbals like 70% uh, they say 7% is what only we say convey through words rest 55% is through body movement and 38% is is through the intonation so how how am i modulating my voice we talked about what is an effective facilitation wherein we feel make everybody feel welcome so it shouldn't be that you know uh, we should not be making judgment with with a face, with with the looks of an individual with a with a profile of an individual with the kind of clothes this person is wearing with the kind of educational background this person has It's because you know uh, we have our own biases and at times these biases color our conversation and probably help us or make us you know unconsciously uh, be sound more preferable and favorable to one and not to the other so you got as a facilitator you got to be ensuring that you are you're completely balanced completely neutral and completely welcoming each one from wherever they are coming from it's not about somebody much senior is is more welcome in the group somebody more senior their point of view are more regarded and respectful in comparison uh, to somebody who is more junior so you got to ensure that you're welcoming everybody you have a clear set of established goals you set up clear expectations so what you have is uh, what in the beginning what you can do is like i'm trying to understand from you 
uh, what do you expect from the course? Uh, so you establish a goal and then at the same time, in consonance with that goal, you also set the expectation that this is what this will set, this will resolve for you, this is what it will not resolve for you. We'll try our best in case we can, we can handle or we can take care of those situations as well. So there are no surprises for anybody and you can validate at end of a training also, did we meet the expectations or where did we meet the expectations? So what happens that if I, uh, with, after every workshop, what I do is I pick up things and I, uh, you know, I tell them my learning objective, this is what I'll do. But end of the day, what I have is that each workshop, for me, each workshop is different. And I have my learnings with, sometime I have my learnings for RP. So it's an individual interaction. So every time is a different experience because you, you're learning with, with that set of, uh, uh, you know, people. So with that, what you'll do is that you will take back those learnings and you will edit your own workshop. You will incorporate the you know, uh, the you will incorporate those recommendations. You will incorporate things. So probably, you know, as for the experience at places you have not pick up, picked up the right examples, at places you have not been very practical and experiential, at places this needs an edit. So what you do is that you set those expectations, but at the same time, it gives you a platform to actually, you know, improvise your own uh, workshops as well. Provide them, you know, uh, behind the scene expectations in terms of what are the ground rules you have. You foster communication between people. So one of the important rule of, uh, you know, important, uh, I mean, not said, but it's it's an indirect benefit which you have of a training that, uh, you know, people who are part of that training particularly, they get to know each other better. And eventually, wherever they will meet in the organization, otherwise also beyond this training. They'll be more comfortable talking to each other. They'll be more comfortable with, you know, over a coffee with each other. So you got to ensure that what, for whatever time these people are in the room, you're fostering communication and you are ensuring that all of them get to know each other well and they're able to, you know, share their you know, point of view. So just to have more aggressive participation, you can you can always think of, you know, having a quad or, a, you know, or a trio or a duo kind of a, or a pair kind of an arrangement wherein people get to interact more through activities. Also, uh, bring a topic. I mean, each topic, if you have uh, within your within your uh, program, if you have subtopics, you know, start with a learning objective. Bring a closure or a you know conclusive end to a particular uh, subset of your program. Also ask people uh, about their learnings, you know, ask them to probably have an action plan or probably share with the entire group what was their learning from this. So it, it actually, you know, it cements the learning. So it cements the learning, you know, you tell the concept, you have a role play, you let them do a case study and then you ask them what was their takeaway. Because see, I mean, you can have a you can have a very big workshop, but eventually, if people do not have takeaways, and if people are not learning, and they're not translating that in their terms of their habit, it, it's it's not useful to anybody, neither to you or not to taught them. Model participation and discussion. You know, ensure that they are participating. Keep the discussion alive in times if you feel. Uh, if you feel that you know the the discussion is becoming very sluggish and people are not participative, so probably you know drop a bomb at that time, do a magic wand, probably break the discussion. Either either ask, give them a break, or break the discussion in terms of asking a question which is very generic, which let everybody participate. Uh, you you present, uh, you know, you ensure that everybody is present. You keep the discussion on the topic. You you guide the participant. If people, some people are not able to include themselves because they're not connecting. So maybe you're talking about, you start talking about, you bring an example wherein you, you quote an example from an international holiday. Maybe some of the people have not gone on international destinations. So it's not inclusive example. So you got to be ensuring that your examples are very inclusive or uh, maybe a shopping everybody would have gone for shopping so you try and connect your major and bigger complex topics to things which are much simpler and which will make everybody include which will be much closer to people so that way is you can bring in those examples and guide the participant if people are not able to think on the topic or, or the place try and simplify them that they're able to include and you make sure the audience and the content are in sync so this is what we discussed, uh, uh, you know, last time. 
we are we talked about perceptions we talked about uh, that you know everyone's perception is different that doesn't mean that one of us is right and the other person is wrong so it's no uh, it's, it's we got to be respecting and we got to be seeing things from other person's perceptions uh, because perceptions are extremely important uh, we used to do a training called uh, you know managing your perceptions or uh, because what happens is if i if people do not perceive me as collaborative i cannot say that i don't pay any heed to it uh, and i do not care because maybe these are the people who are designing uh, or who are deciding the next job rotation next critical assignment uh, for for high potential so probably i will miss on a lot of opportunities i will miss on a lot of you know a uh, lot of occasions wherein i can learn from that particular person because this person is averse to not talking to me and i did not and maybe that i had the real feedback uh, by having a conversation or having a coffee with that person to understand the perception why do he has the perception he has i can probably you know make my relationship better by asking those questions from that person at least this person this will clarify the perception this person has so it's extremely important by not completely rejecting anyone's perception but trying to understand and decode why the perception is the way it is so there are a couple of examples which i showed that sometimes you know somebody sees a trophy somebody sees two faces somebody sees an apple somebody sees a face and and they are all you know uh, they're all coming from our experiences they are so we have our uh, we have our biases which are deeply seeded in our in our experiences so what happens that you know we experience we we live in association so what we do is if we have a new situation which is very close to or which is faintly close to something which we have dealt with in past uh then what we will do is that we will bring in that past experience and then try and fit that past experience in this new setting without realizing that a lot of environmental variables have changed my environment has changed the person in front of me is different so there are a lot of variables which are dynamic which are moving my past experience which i learned in my past settings in my past reality might not fit in this situation but since it's less training for me it it uh, you know it stop it actually and i can escape from a lot of fresh thinking i can bring in something which is already part of my subconscious mind it's much easier for me it's less dissipating for me so i then bring in that experience and i i do this and then i pick up those um, biases which are already which are part of me which i don't realize so that's but end of the day that actually colors or changes the way you act in a situation so i talked about couple of biases we what we can probably do because these are very these are topic in itself so we can probably spend some time on biases also in one of the workshops then we talked about how should you listen how should you be encouraging people you should be not you should be quiet and you should be giving opportunity for other person to talk completely and you summarize because extreme uh, in, we all have seen in males that uh, you know uh, we have at times we have chains of males because uh, either the other person is uh, is angry and not understanding the entire mail and then writing one one liners so what i probably has not understood what i'm trying to say so it's validation in terms of what i'm saying and what you're understanding i'm saying they are both same so that kind of summarization if i summarize the way i've heard you 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 have an opportunity of either correcting me or probably gaining that confidence that at least yes this person has understood me <clears throat> so that way summarization is extremely important validation is extremely important because then you act on the right problem at least the diagnosis is not wrong so these are couple of things which we talked in past uh so there are a lot of you know uh, there are a lot of theories which talk about your personality how in what situation do you act and how do you how do you perceive things how do you take decisions so we did not go into detail of all of it but uh, this is what we talked so uh, we also talked about that how do we learn how do we remember things uh, i have this presentation shared with kk sir then you can probably you know if you need it you can probably take it 
So that we talked about what is an inclusion language. How do you have? We all know that uh, now there is huge focus on the diversity, not only representation but inclusion of that diversity with multiple organizations. So how can you include? So it's not only hiring for women or hiring disabled people or hiring LGBT. It's about using that kind of inclusion language and bringing that culture within an organization that you would, these people are able to contribute to their potential. Then we talked about, um, you know, how do you effective question to broaden your skill? You can have, um, you can have open-ended question, you can have close-ended question, you can have overhead questions which talk about which are which are addressed to everybody. You can have relay question, you know, somebody asks you a question, you relay it back to them. You reverse the question, one question which participant asks you, you ask the rest of the participant or you have a directed question. So these are a couple of things which you do in a facilitation and this is how and your see we are human beings we we have biases and we are constantly judging so everything which you would uh, you know which you would do you will be judged multiple times by a participant so it, with a kind of facial expressions you make with a kind of clothes you 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 wear with a kind of words you use the kind of body language you have so this is something which you cannot escape but what you can do is that probably you can control this you can have a better impact on on the audience or to build up a better rep uh, anybody wants to uh, anybody who wants to you know bring in a reference or probably something from the last class we had some wonderful examples from sudeep ji and rupesh in last class uh, wherein they talked about uh, their own experiences in training yes ma'am. and uh, so i mean that's my uh, just to build the continuity and to have a best peer learning experience it's my request to all of you make time to attend this session uh, because what will happen because i am also learning in all these sessions i'm always learning but what happens is uh, this you know i mean if i'm talking about say including uh, the people or bringing more collaboration in your facilitation skill uh, there i mean we have such a group of learned people like rupesh ji sweet ji everybody anupama ji i mean all of you priyanka uh, meena anand ji so we have all heard you in terms of you have your own legacy of experiences in facilitation and you bring in examples for each other so use let's use this platform for a wonderful peer learning also beyond istb so we are all learning in the process uh, right, because right. yes uh, so and these experiences are unique yes meena you saying something hey, yeah ma'am uh, ma'am uh, summarization is very much important i feel in current scenario because we do in a virtual sessions na so due to some network issue connectivity issues now i have uh, gone through this experience actually my employees and distributors those connected on the sessions they some sometimes they just uh, due to network issues not able to hear me properly so when uh, we do summarization na so they feel so happy ki at least summarization ho jata hai na to mam jo miss ho jata hai na wo hamare ko uska jo basic jo aapne padhaya na wo samajh mein aa jata hai So summarization is more important in terms of in a virtual session, which I feel completely, completely with you, because uh, we all understand the practical nuances. Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes people people are not there completely. I mean, sometimes they do get up from their desk, uh, and uh, it, it's difficult to hold people completely onto their workstations at times, as you rightly picked up. when things are uh, they miss on certain things it becomes much easier for them to pick up those things anything else from anyone no ma'am it's okay i mean we have already sure attended that class so uh, definitely summarization was good <laughs> okay so what we have planned to do is today uh, just to be you know build in the sync what we will do is we will talk about the facilitation process we will talk about what are the common types of workshop we normally do we will talk about how should you be facilitating the adult learning what is transformative learning uh, 
which is uh, i mean how do you design how, what are the best practices to design your own workshop what is the role of a facilitator uh, then how should you prepare for a workshop uh, how can you understand your participant how should you uh, you know build the design activities sometimes what happens that uh, you know sometimes you uh, you start maybe the introduction with an activity or you have a longer activity or a case study right in the beginning of the session sometimes you have a basic concept or a presentation to be shared at the start so you start i mean you understand the audience and you decide on the go then and there that this is what you will do we'll talk about power of practice why should you be practicing it's equally important for the trainer as well as participant make sure you do make participant practice enough during the workshop because uh, even if they would have practiced say for 10 minutes of the skill you are teaching them it will be much easier for them to actually translate that in their own you know translate their learnings in in their experiences when they are back so make sure this is maybe this is 10 minutes or 20 minutes but this is not missed so make sure that you have you make the participants are practicing what is the key characteristics of the activities and um so i mean these are a couple of question i've just placed in uh, for you to answer how should you be facilitating how do you create a safe environment for group to interact uh, how do you ensure that your things are on on track and how do you ensure there is more collaboration i need a lot of contribution from you here because uh, then you can actually bring in your own tricks or your own ways this how do you bring in collaboration in your workshop uh no matter how much how well you prepare there would be preparation issues there'll be unexpected events so how should you be handling them and what how should you be dealing with uh, you know challenging dynamics sometimes maybe uh, a participant come right up front and he will question your, uh, your the veracity or the authenticity of your content or uh, your own credibility as a trainer so situations like that happen because you have all kind of participants so how should um, how should you be you know maneuvering through these challenges how should you be creating closures how should you extend the learning it's extremely important uh, that uh, post post learning uh, you have some kind of touch points because uh, the translation is extremely important for them uh, you build in groups like maybe you and uh, me and sudeep attended a session so you make sure that you some create some kind of an arrangement between me and sudeep that we meet over a cup of coffee and we talk about uh, implementation of learning or we talk about our action plan or we we share the learning with each other what worked for them what did not work for them so you create those kind or such kind of camaraderie such kind of pairing such kind of groups so that people get to share uh their learnings even post uh, the workshop you wrap up things ensure you thanking people uh, who have helped you behind the scene and you make sure that you are actually acknowledging the contribution of the people so these are couple of things which i which i kept for today uh feel free to share i mean uh, in between uh, anything anything which we need to discuss maybe in lex class what we can do is there are areas which need more attention we can pick up maybe one of the professional sales skill workshop to see what, how it works in practice does that make sense to you or do we have any other expectations uh, for the session today Do you see? Uh, do you see a presentation, or you see a PDF? It's a PDF. I whole file. I have whole screen is actually showing, ma'am. Please okay. make it. I mean, full screen so that. I think it is PowerPoint. Yeah. Now this is uh, the PDF. Okay, this is a PDF. So, shall I share a document or simply share a? doesn't make a difference huh? okay okay so uh, so what happens that what is a workshop so common workshop types uh, so i'm sorry i i missed one do we have any other expectations from anyone no i mean, it's, yeah. I, I think it's it covers all i mean everything okay for the day <clears throat> okay so what what are the different types of workshop to be do 
we do workshops like professional skills. Uh, we do, you know, we try and have conversations with people around their presentation skill, interpersonal communication, conflict management, and, uh, you know, such kind of skills, which uh, wherein we help them understand the concept, we, help, we bring in role plays and we do case studies. We can also do workshop on, um, on artistic and creative skills, uh, wherein uh, we give them a framework, we let them think. So it's 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 the result of e of it would be different for each one of us. So each one of us will have a different kind of creative potential. We only orient their mind in terms of thinking, but at the same time, we don't give them end results. We do not, you know, we don't try and color their thinking. So each one of them get to the different results. Uh, sometimes what we do is we try and do a process training, we bring in a new software, we try and help people understand a method of using it or probably process of using it. Uh, that's the, that kind of workshop. Also, sometimes we get into a strategic planning, we do workshop wherein we all of us brainstorm on our vision statement or probably our goals for the year. So this is a strategic planning workshop wherein you facilitate that kind of a workshop, let people think on the vision mission statement their you know uh, their their goals for the future and their the failures in the past and let them orient and think as per the market realities how do they strategically plan we also do you know personal development workshop wherein you connect the goals because um, so if you, I mean, all of us over a period of time, we get into spirituality, we try and understand uh, how do we include, or how do we take ourselves to the next level <clears throat> in terms of our own personal development? How do we perceive things? How do we get impacted by, uh, you know, what others say? And how do we internalize those, uh, those ideas? How do we give space to the other person to think without constantly building on perceptions or judgments or biases? So that's my own personal development journey. You can, you know, you know there are uh, lessons from spiritual books like Gita, which talk about how should you be leading your life and how do you get best of your own life? You do workshops like team building, uh, wherein uh, something stuck in my, in my throat. Can I, I, I take a second break and I'll bring in a water myself. Yes, I'm back. I'm sorry for that. And we do workshops around team building. So what happens is that team building will help us to, you know, break the ice, bring in teams more closer to themselves. And they're more comfortable with each other. They can collaborate and they will be more successful with each other. So we do such kind of workshop wherein the intent is it's team building, break the ice, or, you know, to have, have that kind of comfort, have that kind of closeness and intimacy within the team. So they're more comfortable talking with each other. Um, if anybody wants to say any other kind of workshops they have done otherwise. Sure. So what we do is um, we facilitate, you know, the adult learning is extremely important, uh, wherein you got to be, you got to be sensitive to the backgrounds these people come from, what kind of experiences they come from. Uh, and they want to, you know, they want to have their self-directed experiences. They want to not learn from you. So you got to ensure uh, and you got to be, you know, creating opportunities for them to applying that information. And learning happens at the at the junctures. So there is a life cycle of transformation. You know, I mean, when did you when did you learn most, or when did you change when you changed a job, or probably you took a loan, you took a house, or so the items which stick to your life in terms of learnings or in terms of experiences are the one which is uh, you know which which brought in a lot of change in your life. 
and which brought in a big change. So that stick and it, that experience is, is actually saved in your mind, in your unconscious experience. And a lot of time, you don't even realize you bring in that experience. So you got to connect. And these are your motivations and goals and aspirations and your experiences and your biases. So you got to have that kind of an aha moment. You got to be discovering and constantly either asking people or bringing examples wherein it, it helped them connect with that dot or the past sticky experience which they have. So you got to be connecting the experiences with something which you believe they would have experienced in past. So if you are able to bring in that kind of motivation or that kind of sticky experience from their past, it becomes much easier for you to connect with those uh, those people. You can be, you know, you can probably sometimes when you are brainstorming, and sometimes maybe you are when you are working, say, with a group of doctors or with a group of CAs, you can brainstorm and think about your activities on those lines, or probably you can interview a couple of people to understand and analyze what kind of experience they have. But even if you try and you know get that experience from them, or probably uh, you know bring in or ask questions or probe in those sticky experiences when they changed their job which was the best manager they had why did they feel those were the best managers so let them unravel all that but in case you want to bring them into the room you got to be asking their experience and you got to be bringing out in the room their sticky experiences to connect their motivations and their goals agree yes, yes ma'am ma and that's how you can bring in, uh, you know, that's how you can bring in uh, the, the transformational experience for them. So normally what they say is uh, something which, which they would have repeated, say, 40 to 50 times has become their habit. And, uh, you know, all the experiences get saved in their mind in terms of those neural pathways. So those neural pathways, uh, and then that's, that's the experience which they bring in any context of present setting. Um, so how do you bring in a change in the behavior? You bring in a change in the behavior by helping them analyze and not be aware of their own behavior. Help them practice an alternate behavior multiple times. Give them, a, uh, I mean, and when they repeat that kind of a behavior in settings, that, that's, that's become their, uh, and that's how it changes for them, which they don't even realize. In any case, you have you have an example probably in any of your settings, which any any specific trick which you use to bring in those experiences from past. Anybody wants to talk about the you know when you when you are actually facilitating an adult learning workshop, anything which you bring from uh, which you do, which let people bring in those experiences and help you include them better in the uh, throughout the workshop. Any example you want to bring in? Okay. Uh, so when you are designing a workshop, so first, uh, sometimes when you anything which you need to facilitate and when you're designing it first you should ask yourself that why are you designing it why what is it that it should do and what it what is it that it should change and what should be an end result so you always start with an end result and then you you from the end result you design the activities and then you start with your present state so you first you always start with an end state then uh, this is what you need to change. And then you, you try and understand that why should you change it? Uh, also, what you can do is that in the, in the while designing a workshop, you create an environment wherein people are able to collaborate in the risk-free settings and they're able to contribute and they're, they're able to safely learn. They have that kind of confidentiality that their, their uh, information would not be shared and um, also make sure that you know every time we say is that brain will be active say for 20 minutes and then after 20 minutes you lose them you create an activity and then you also again go back to 20 minutes so make sure that you are designing your content in the chunks of 20 20 minutes also at a logical end what you get what you should ideally be doing you should be creating a short assessment or you should be you know creating a write-up opportunities because write-up being sometimes not everybody is comfortable talking so at the same but some people are comfortable talking so you should 
once you finish your topic, you should also have a processing activity. You should have a cementing activity. Processing activity, asking, uh, you know, asking them to have a discussion with their partner, or probably help help some people who are not comfortable write or talking. They they can probably write it, or you create a short assessment. So anything which you have finished in each uh, in the design element, you got to make sure that you are creating a processing activity for it. And you are creating a semantic activity. If you're teaching them something, you make sure that you make them practice this. Or, uh, you know, you do a problem self solving activity wherein everybody get to contribute and participate. You, you can probably let them debate. So make sure that they are engaged in some form or the other. Which of the following is, uh, so th this is a question uh, which probably one of you can help me answer. So, which is not the dimension of a facilitator role. Facilitator lead groups to work independently, help people move towards a specific outcome, leading groups to collaborate together. First one is not actually the... Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Leading groups to work independently. It's not the uh, dimension of the facilitator role, actually. Mm -hmm. And why do you say so? Because uh, our role is uh, to collaborate together and all participants Correct. to come together. So work independently, with love, everybody will go in different direction. True. So it's it's True. not diff uh, it's not possible to I mean uh, combine all these activity in the same I mean that direction. So sure, sure, sure. Because each one of them are working independently, even if there are synergies. Then even if they have experiences from past which they want to bring in and want to use that for enriching each one's uh, knowledge so let's do that but it's not uh, that they go on their own but it's so the intent is beyond our learning uh, you know outcomes the intent is that everybody is learning from everyone so let's ensure that there is no supremacy everybody is standing on a level platform everybody is learning from each other's experience All right synergy will not be there actually Yes, synergy would also not be there. Uh, camaraderie would also not be there. Yes, yes. Mind would not be at ease. I'm Definitely. constantly, yes, yes. So I'm constantly thinking, how do I prove myself? You know, I, I right. get that kind of feeling that how do I prove myself superior than others? Right. So, and, and we all human beings have a, have a, have a need for belonging and have a need for uh, inclusion and at the same time we all you know by giving more we are more happier i i was uh, so that way is because you know, i was just celebrating one time my um, i was asking my son as in when was he most happy so he told me he was happy the day he had uh, he had helped a student win so they had gone to a school which was like a you know weaker section of people. So their school used to arrange a program wherein they will all go and adopt a child and they will help and support that child. So the child he supported had actually won a debate, and he felt extremely happy uh, that very day. He still remember that. So it's sticking, it, it sticked in the, his mind, and he still remember. So the joy of giving would never. It'll be lasting. It'll be sustainable happiness. So that was we all. We are all human beings. We know how do we get happy. It's just that temporary happiness and high is what when we try and prove supremacy, but that is not lasting. Um, so principle of adult learning include the following: understanding the why, learning by doing, experiences are all of these. So, Meena, probably if you can help me answer that. Ma'am, all of these. Why do you say so? Maybe you you can probably you know, talk about one of your workshops. Uh, Ma'am, uh, because uh, whenever any adult join any workshop, he or she has to know about the why to join that workshop to we actually create the WIFM when we shared the mail for the senior uh, level uh, managers training we do 
so we particularly mention on that why it is important to attend for you mm. not even in on mails when they enter into the training rooms on a virtual platforms so mm, we create some stories uh, for them so that they understand they are knowledgeable yes they have an, their own experience and they are doing their work very well but somehow something is more need to uh, need is there to so that they can are more capable to handle their teams and uh, manage their work better true 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 uh, yeah sometimes uh, what happens is that people are in the training room because they've been asked to uh, attend the training sometimes they are they are in the training room when they really want to uh, learn that subject and they liked and they've chosen that topic sometimes they are in the uh, they are in the but when whichever scenario they are in the training room they always want to understand why should i be there and they would always see it's, it's a mutual win win situation they will uh, you would also understand then they you will understand their wise you will also understand their experience you can help them contribute from the experience you can help them you know bring in examples from their experience on their wise and this will help or enrich the learning for others in the room so it's it's important and that's so, how you enter correct ma'am in one of my session uh, we have some senior person in the because i worked with uh, one of the project which wipro did esic is uh, mm-hmm. is um, automation they mm-hmm. before that they were uh, on the manual register pe sab kuch likhte the after that they just computerized on that so automation mm-hmm. that automations project i was the part of that for 6 months mm-hmm. uh, th- so uh, when uh, we go to the senior people on director level or senior director level people when they come and un- uh, join us on that uh, first workshop we did for a one hour Mm-hmm. why this automation is uh, mandatory for them so initially they are starting just uh, questioning on us ki uh, this is not possible to do uh, on a automation mode jaisa chal raha hai na physical mode waisa hi chalne dete hain on register and all they were not totally agreed on that mm-hmm. but somehow i managed and I'll tell them ki let's see yes you have your own experience uh, you all feel ki yes it is good what we are doing but let us give you an overview why it is important uh, why it is uh, how uh, the change will help them to uh, work make more easy not for you for every employee of that esic member mm-hmm. not for the member who all the part of the esics uh, like because they all are the labors they will also feel good so please given give us an opportunity of not for an hour workshop at least for an a half an hour mm-hmm. so when we started for an a half an hour it extended to an a two hours mm-hmm. they all are agreed because initially they were not totally agree true true so that wifm need to give them is very much important correct correct if they come and join to the session room also still they have some uh, block in their minds mm mm-hmm. yes yes so that that's how that's how i talked about you know that transformative learning so first is psychological which is which is a change in understanding you you tried bringing i think that that's what you targeted there yeah ma'am so, uh, i i always try my uh, this uh, psychology treatment in my all the sessions true i think it works that the tool you can use to create the shift are like providing knowledge information models or theories explaining then why of something so then that's how you explain why and that's how you uh, and that's how you're able to convince these people better right right yeah. and convictional is like when when you where where a person has a change in their belief system is usually um, you know you create that kind of flash of insight you you create that kind of an aha moment but which you 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 need to set your audience to happen so what's interesting is that insight causes a permanent shift in brain that's how those neural pathways and that get stayed and that i mean that becomes that's how it becomes unpolitic uh normally this is what people teach in neuroscience also that uh, it'll stick that way and these are like 
this will stay as a conviction so every time it will stay as a bias in your mind but uh, whenever it is it has connected something which you are telling me has connected with something which is already stored in my mind and i'm now bringing the change in my point of view so i'm changing my belief system for because of something you're saying so that's how it becomes my conviction uh, and uh, and behavioral is like when people are willing to change their action they they you help them you know you have observation application experimentation and this will help them create and groove that those neural pathways this is how this is what we we talk on terms of habits so thank you for bringing that thank you ma'am so let me share screen awesome she we still have people coming in anything else from anyone else anything from sudeep ji it's be very silent today and let me share my screen back where did my pdf go yeah do you see my pdf or you see my presentation yeah it's a pdf ma'am okay it's a pdf yes so this is what best practices in the workshop include uh, include all of the following except so which one is the right choice maybe i can request sanakshi to answer if she's there Okay. Anupama ji are you there? I think second one ma'am. Yes, Best practice is this. Yes sir. So uh um, vulnerability correct correct sir it's completely right yeah you always start with right so that's right you create a safe environment for people to learn mm-hmm. and take risk yeah. and uh, your environment where people can connect and share connect and so share is, yes so you let people be vulnerable because you give them a safe environment you are actually providing them a safe and a risk free environment wherein uh, you have given them that kind of confidence and credibility that yes this is the environment wherein they can um, they can share uh, so because i think that's uh, so my understanding is when they are more vulnerable that's when then the learning is also more because people are willing to open up right right so how should you be preparing for a workshop i hope you still see the pdf yes yes ma'am I'm just trying to you know maneuver uh, this uh, so no matter what kind of workshop you're leading it's important that you really clear about the issue of the workshop you're trying to solve your level of clarity directly impact the experience of your participant a well designed workshop has a clear set of outcomes so we normally call it as a learning outcome um, they should answer the question at the end of the workshop Uh, so what knowledge skill uh, and participants will have so what you probably start with and what they have reached out to so that's that's essentially a first line so uh, that's uh, and what you need to be sure of that uh, this is your point a and this is the point b you want to reach to and what you do is that you do that through the series of content and activities and presentations so this is the basis of your learning and um, so the, first you figure out the right order of the content you ensure that uh, okay. so what should be your uh, what should be your order of the content 
I find that there seems to be a right or a best order for moving the audience from. I mean, that that's what you do is that you uh, you try you first understand that what you're trying to achieve, where you are at, and that that will help you decide that what should be your order of your content. Uh, what you can possibly do is that you can have a posted slips. You can you know move it here and there, considering your audience. And uh, you can brainstorm on those activities. So every group is different. Some group will need more or less info at different points. So I always build a few extra slides. So if you have extra slides of content, ke liye bana lije. sometimes you use them, sometimes you don't use them. Um, uh, and if, if they're not needed, you can probably hide them. You can have brainstorm activities to highlight the learning moment. Uh, once you have the content in order, then you can start to think about the different processing activities that would work. Uh, you can be as expensive as possible through this part because options give them more flexibility. You try and have maximum options. Your experiences, uh, your options should be uh, should be through different styles. So you're able to include different people. Skybar, you will have an activity first and um, sometime you will have a content first. It just depends. You can have an initial, uh, sometime you can have your introduction activity with uh, with, uh, with a 30 to 90 minutes hands-on experience. Uh, third is about sketching, sketch the timing of your workshop agenda. Once you have a learning plan and possible activity, it is, it is now time to start figuring out what time each of an activity will take. And uh, this will uh, always, I mean, this will be more stressing because you've got to be ensuring that, uh, you know, uh, you've got to be moving. So, so this will help you understand that how much time you will take in the entire workshop. Right. Uh, pick the one that that will best move your group along to achieving your goals and at the time you need to open and close the workshop sometimes this normally doesn't fit now you have to go back and tinker so because once you will have those uh, those sticky notes you'll have to tinker because then you'll have to if once you have a fair understanding of that these are the activities you want to include and this is the time each of an activity will include so with these sticky notes you will move things here and there because that will give you a fair sense of uh, idea of how much time you will actually take to do that workshop so sometimes you will you will start cutting breaks. This is your take because you also need to factor in you know at times in a physical workshop you do a you know a morning tea break you give a lunch break you give an evening break. So with all those breaks also need to be included. So you make sure that you understand what how much time will it take. Sometimes when you believe that you know the certain portion of the content which can take lesser time you don't include the content you simply include the activity for that particular section and that way people will be able to understand so that's what you do so you combine a couple of things um, so normally people have seen uh, uh, like team building activity people do it with introduction so it becomes much easier for people to have you know to break the ice at the same time you finish your introduction part then and there uh, and also make sure that you remember a 20 minute rule that you don't have a long content stretching, say for you have, you know, content or a presentation going for 60 minutes without any kind of interaction or engaging or including audience, then it becomes very monotonous and you lose people there and it becomes very difficult. So remember that 20% rule and make sure that you are including um, all of it in the, uh, all, all the, everybody in the workshop. So how how any one of you share or uh, design your workshop? Do you want to share? Okay. Then you got to be understanding your participant. If what is extremely important that. Uh, Every time, I'm sure you have done multiple workshops, but every time you see that, uh, the, because every workshop is a co-creation between a facilitator and a participant who attend on that specific day. So great facilitator is to you flex your audience because you're never going to have a perfect formula of what works every single time. But you can get really good at understanding your participants so you can make each offering successful. So actually it is best to learn about your group before the actual event. You make sure that you you know how many people are attending. So, so first is how many are coming. 
uh, sometimes uh, you they, this will help you to think about the right grouping of your activities sometimes you have like you have activities planned in a group of four and you have an odd number of people so you have activities so you make sure that you understand that how will you pair people how will you put them in trios or you put them in quads so you can create a lot of intimacy when you have uh, sunakshi sunakshi you there I, I think I admitted you last time also. So are you facing a problem in connecting? Sanakshi, can you hear me? Okay. So that's how, when you create a smaller group, actually, when you create a smaller group, it becomes much easier to let people be comfortable and let everybody participate. Uh, also, uh, understand what are their, uh, so there are, uh, there are pros and cons of it, because if you have a larger group, maybe, uh, you know, one, one person remains silent and then not, not everybody is participating. You've got to be knowing their experience level, you know, what are their age and experience level. When you have different generation in your audience, we've talked about it. Different generations have different, uh, so, you know, the, we have millennials, we have baby boomers, we have generation X and generation Y. Uh, we all equate or understand things in a different perspective. Some, for some, it is indiscipline, for some, it is uh, your creativity and innovation and thinking. So it's, it's important that you know that uh, what age group they are in. So you, it'll help you to plan your activities. It can be challenging uh, to find examples or case studies that resonate with all of them. But knowing them at least well in advance, you are able to bring in activities which will include some and then another set also. So you will bring a set of or a range of activities that you're able to include all of them. So some, because content of some will apply to some and the content of others will apply to some others. So this, this will work, you will have to find commonalities. Third one is uh, uh, that they are from this, are they from the same organization? Are they from the same department? If they are, you can leverage their shared experiences, examples and lingos to make the workshop feel really aligned with their group. And you will have to be more careful about the relationship, what they bring into the room. Uh, if they have, like, you know, if some people, they are, they have alliances or conflict in the group, if there will be senior leaders in the group, or if they have a person in who, who, could, uh, who could influence the opinion of rest of others. So you got to be knowing all of it right before beginning the workshop. First, fourth one is what are their jobs and career? This will help you to know where uh, where are, are they coming from, what is it that you can leverage in terms of their experience. If uh, so, if you're talking to probably a healthcare workers, you can uh, you can you you can bring in more examples from science and data. So that will connect them better. Uh, so if, if there is a specific issue or a challenge with this with this workshop they're trying to solve, uh, then uh, you, you can ask few of the participant in advance. So I can, so what you can probably also do is that if they, uh, what you can do is you can interview these people. If they are, uh, they are trying to solve a particular problem, you can try and understand that problem better. Uh, pay attention to what they are doing. Do they look, um, if, if you are not in the right direction, uh, they will give you because the participant give you a real time feedback also. If uh, if they they are looking confused, if they are looking engaged, or if they are participating, is their energy in the room very high, or the energy in the room is dropping, or they are feeling sluggish? So these are signals for you to adjust, or uh, you know, and uh, you will you will have to you know as a as a facilitator, this is your priority, and you make sure that you bring in that kind of change in your facilitation during the workshop know a lot of it right in the beginning and incorporate all of it during your designing of the workshop and all this will help you in designing the right kind of activities are you with me on that yes ma'am yes ma 
uh, we talked about this uh, that we bring in activities which will uh, which will be extremely important which will be uh, first you understand their belief and behavior uh, sorry I'm s you still see the presentation no uh, you still see the pdf 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 no? yeah, yeah yeah it just disappeared from my screen okay <laughs> So when, as per the principles of adult learning, you bring in metaphors or you bring in analogies or you also ask people uh, that, uh, you know, they ask them to share their experience. That will help you to connect it better. Uh, you should be using activities which is appealing to a wide style of and preferences. And you give them that confidence that you will keep these activities completely confidential and uh, you would not uh, and if, if uh, it would not be disclosed to anybody who is who is arranging or organizing or to their seniors uh, then uh, what you there is a something called design sprinting there is a book called design sprinting by jake knapp this is created for google ventures so what google does is they have their uh, i think they they spare out 300 billion uh, people 300 million rupee dollars and they what they try and do is that uh, for all the new product and new ventures that they come up with uh, they they experiment and they invest uh, there and that's how they come up with new product so this is a good book which you can probably uh, which you can read you can see a review of it on youtube or you can read the book it is about you know they do what they do is that they bring in people it's a five days process it's a, a jan like you can start it till monday finish it on friday you interview a couple of people there you bring in a storyboard so you have a you do a brainstorming you will do it with not more than seven people and for not more than five days uh, you bring in, uh, you you try and understand what problem you're trying to solve for, then you prototype it, you also create a storyboard, so you keep excluding things. In these five days, you storyboard it, you prototype it, and you launch it also. So it's it's a wonderful book, it helps you to, you know, do uh, how should you be designing things, it's like a sprinting exercise, You, I recommend and suggest that you read that book. What is the name of the author? It's it's a multiple it's a couple Achha. of authors uh, okay, but okay, okay. Uh, Jake Knapp hai ab Jake Knapp se bhi bhodenge. Jake hai okay. or John hai and uh, okay. is book ke basis pe uh, is what they run a company called Google Venture Sprint. Okay okay. So it's a very famous one. So if you will, uh, you can find summary of it on YouTube also. So part of practice uh, is uh, practicing is very important because the more you practice, the more calm and confident and confident you will sound in your workshop. Uh, is the real trick is actually do it real time. Do I mean do your with your decks on with, or with your props and do this practice. For example, um, so if if I discovered how it is, so at times you know you get confused with your own handouts. You what you realize that you can probably clip them and order them rightly. So even if you don't have your you have you don't have your notes, you can you can carry it. So it's just about running a doing a dry run. I uh, you practice out do a trial run. You can also pilot your workshop. So what what I suggest that if you're doing a new workshop, bring in a couple of your friends, pilot it, call it pilot, and say clearly that you're looking for feedback. Let them people, so it's it's easier and quicker and uh, you know better to get feedback from your friends rather than trying to stand in front of critical audience. So do that feedback session with your friends. Ask your friends to role play a challenging situation. Also for participant also, uh, you should plan certain kind of uh, practicing activities because participant, if they will spend 10 minutes with you there in the workshop, it becomes much easier for them to implement those learnings. So practice is equally important for participant as well as for a facilitator because participant, you know, normally what they do is uh, they, they're not willing to practice with you. But if you create that kind of an opportunity, that is where it will stay in their subconscious mind. So it definitely, and once they practice it, say for 40 to 50 times, it will become their habit. So that repetition is what will make it their habit and this will be more fluid for them 
to implement those learnings or implement those learnings in the practical scenario. Guys, please pick up the phone. So with that, and we'll come to logistics. How should you be planning the logistic for your workshop? So first step is uh, is scheduling. So it's scheduling is very important. You need to pick the days and times to offer your workshop. Make sure you consider only not only your schedule, but at the participants. Sometimes, like I used to work for finance group, so like they have their in March end, they have their closing. So it's, that's definitely not the right time for do the training. So I would not probably plan them or at that particular time. Sometimes certain times, holiday time doesn't work well, say for teachers. So you make sure that when you're planning it, you are you're scheduling it as per as per you know convenience considering the convenience your or probably uh, or participants convenience so it's extremely important that they are able to attend the session uh, in unaltered or a focused manner and nothing is bothering them uh, second you need a place to host it uh, whether uh, that's a physical space like a conference room or an online platform you need to reserve the space allowing additional time for setup and breakdown also consider what amenities the space offer like um, you know i like the room with movable chairs because uh, that gives me a flexibility to arrange the room the way i want um, uh, so i i need i i use videos in my if sunakshi has entered so many times sunakshi are you there i've actually made you enter thrice you facing some problems in akshi hello are you facing some problem uh, oh yes i'm facing some technical issue again and again uh, the meeting just ends for me so i have to rejoin it okay, okay. sorry for that no problem no problem as long as you are able to follow and with, with us so um so that's how you completely look at it so you plan all of it right in the beginning and third you make sure that you have taken av um, needs can be met like you use workshop so then you have to have a laptop you have to have a projector you have to have a pointer so you make sure that all that is taken care of and that's in control um if uh, you have to have registration when when the people decide to enroll how do they do that a good registration system will capture the information you need and then send them an automatic notice of um, of their enrollment it is nice that there's an option for uh, putting this on calendar as well and you definitely want them to get reminders a couple of days prior and morning of that particular uh, location or login information clearly displayed your reminder message should let them know anything that make them participation easier like where to park in case they are coming um, they're coming and traveling for this so if you give them those logistic information where should they be parking what things they should bring what meals will be provided how to log in and use the features so you want make these things as clear and easy and possible so that you know uh, the participants are uh, they 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 need uh, they reach well in time and it becomes much easier for them uh, and it it's all everything is uh, everything is been taken care of so such things they, they at least such logistic issues do not worry them six uh, you will need to track who actually attended the workshop so think through how you will collect that information and submit it back to uh, the sponsoring organization or the organization their own organization uh, will you need signing sheet sometimes what you need what you see is uh, the handwriting of people is not legible so what you do is that you do give them a printing sheet and with their all the details printed and then simply let them sign um so uh, you you can you can have participant complete a form last minute for your session like uh, and send them a link maybe you can send them an online link later also which ask them for a feedback um you can send them an instruction how they should submit it you or uh, you can you can take this opportunity to tell them also about the upcoming events that this is what is happening so you try and make sure that you make the the event as easy for them and you try and foresee the logistic issues things which look trivial to you but they are important and they take away the hassle of uh, you know managing lot of things so 
if you are a little proactive in terms of ensuring all that information is given to them well in advance it becomes much easier so it is uh, I mean, these are small small trivial issues as in as i said where should they park the car what time should they come how should they register what will be the break time so all that information if given well in then uh, in advance they feel good about it. Um, so what is the key characteristics of uh, of effective of oh, it's I, I think I made some it, it's it's an effective session actually uh, it's it's an effective workshop actually effective I've mentioned is an effective activities but read it as what is the key characteristics of an effective workshop so this is a question again um, I want uh, maybe beyond Rupesh and Meena I want somebody to answer this How is your workshop effective? So which out of these four choices will make it more effective? Jitendra, are you with me on this? So if I can ask you to answer this question. Yes, ma'am. So, good morning. Good morning. Actually, I was facing some technical glitch, so that's why I tried from mobile and now as well as from the computer. So sorry. I know I did. I know I did see. I mean, I did see Jitendra Sanakshi constantly joining, rejoining. Ah, so <laughs> that is some technical glitch. As you said, uh, ma'am, what is the key characteristics of effective activities? No, it's like, not effective activities. It's effective workshop or workshop. Yeah. Workshop so like. Just, uh, you can say it's a training program as well. Yes, you can yeah, just going to train. training program. So, the, uh, for participating participating activities to improve the participating activity, we can do uh, on uh, group activity based, or sometimes activity based. Sometimes outside of the activity, like uh, treasure and hunt kind of activity, where the all the participants' cooperation and coordination will be the same, and the presentation group based activity we can say presentation based activity or the topic based individual topic based activity we can give to the participants where sure. we can present their own ideas on through chart papers through presentations and through whatever activities they want to do want to use that sure, sure. so jitendra we will also uh, would want to know you a little more because i think uh, you did not attend the last session uh, but for this particular question, so there is a question on the screen which says an effective workshop offers what? So out of these four choices, one of them is right. You help me pick one of that. Hello. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, ma'am. Sorry, I, I, pardon, I, I can't. There was a, some voice was not coming properly. So I couldn't okay. hear you. Sorry. So I'm saying this there is part. a question on the screen. What, which yeah. one of them is, which one of these choices make the workshop more effective? Help me pick up that choice. Uh, Ma'am, uh, as per the, my point of view, that would be the third point that would be uh, best of among all us. True. Uh, they true. offer a wide range of style and preferences. True. True. Because because the whenever we are just conducting the uh, conducting any session or any workshop, so uh, might be possible. But, uh, participants can be five, ten, eleven, twelve, as per the, the audience given by the companies to us. So right. they have a different different mind level of learning. They have a different different style of learning. Sometimes sometimes we of the participants they. Uh, they see the first slide of the presentation and they got the idea about what is the presentation is going on. Correct. And, and might be possible in between of the conversation if you ask to uh, question to any other participant. So he will, <clears throat> suddenly he will ask, he said, what kind of uh, topic it is going on? Mm -hmm. So when we are just doing any activity to engage the participants level of expertise in our training program, so there is a different, different their learning style, advantage of style and preferences as well. So as per the, as you asked me, so I'm, I would prefer the third options, okay. third option. 
that I'm is- with you. I'm with you on that. So, yes, completely. Because uh, that's how that's how you're able to include people by bringing in. Because sometimes now what we have seen during designing a workshop, we have people of different age group, different experiences coming. So uh, we have something in chat. Please write your registration. Okay, that's for not for me. So I'm saying uh, we what we need to ensure that we are able to. you know bring in activities while designing our workshop we are able to bring in activities which is engaging different styles and preferences so what we all know is that there are visual learners they are auditory learner they are kinesthetic learners and there are different level of preferences that somebody you know have a different style of like you, you can you can do an audio visual you can simply do a, a concept or a theory with me so everybody has a different preference and everybody has a different style and that's how we are able to and we are wanting to include different style of activity so we are able to include maximum number of people considering the experience or a, i mean uh, the the principles they come from and that's how a effective workshop will have a range of activities and range of uh, different uh, you know the engaging activities been designed i will not get into facilitation we have just left with 4 minutes uh, so jitender i think if you can you know probably give little introduction about yourself we have lot of people who have huge facilitation experience they will be the one who will help me in how they create safety for group interaction here we will talk about our own examples so this we will then take up uh, next time and how yes. do we keep things on track so maybe you can just give us little introduction about you and that that's when we wrap the class yeah hello hello everyone uh, my name is jitain and i am around 15 years of experience in training and development so from uh, beginning of my career to till now i am just in training and development field right now i am just heading the position of zonal training manager in himalaya drug company heading the largest state of the country which is up and uttarakhand so i have around 2500 uh, participants on different different level like like manager level executive level medical rep level and also isrs level so i am dealing with the four industries you can say that's the pharma otc and uh, fmcg modern trade and general trade so Fine. i have a different kind of level of expertise to uh, i'm just giving the training through classroom and as well in on job wonderful wonderful look forward to insights from you jitendra so uh, ma'am sorry to interrupt you uh, but i have uh, attended a last class also on the 4th of april but was the same problem i shared with the kamin sir that was a technical glitch so okay. i just shared with the screenshot with them Okay, okay okay perfect perfect so we'll quickly wrap up our class in next 2 minutes uh, today we talked about uh, what are the principles of adult learning we talked about uh, how should we be designing a workshop what are uh, how should what what is a learning plan how should the learning design be made and what kind of what what are the best practices how can we make a learning stick what are the transformative junctures for learning and how do we ensure that you know we are breaking our session every 20 minutes to ensure that uh, these uh, you know we are settling in we are processing the settling in of the learnings by by bringing the right examples or bringing the more case studies or bringing examples for people to practice it uh, we also talked about you know design sprinting uh, wherein you can you can let people open up their mind and be more creative and innovative in terms of designing new solutions or solving on working on to a problem together with by with their open mind and uh, how should you be piloting your workshop to make sure that you are you are able to get much output on the focused effort which you are putting in and people are able you are able to bring in the different style of learning or you are able to include different uh, you know different you include different activities so that you are able to include people with different styles and preferences so anything any any other uh, you got to make sure that people are vulnerable in the process you give them safe and uh, environment and a risk free environment so they are able to and they are willing to open up and you ensure that you always start with why and you include the people to make sure that their learning also happen in the process anything else from from meena rupesh at and we just we still have a minute to go
No one, anything. thanks actually. <laughs> thanks, ma'am. Actually, uh, I have again. I mean, go through all these things again. So, I'll ask next time. Anything we should cover in facilitating a workshop? Any pointers which you have for me for next class, uh, Mina? Anything which you want me to cover in facilitation? No, ma'am. Almost everything is, I think, covered. Still, we go through with the again with this content, and if anything comes in my mind, definitely we'll ask and share. Okay. Uh, anything from you? Uh, I think uh, Anand Anupma ji was very silent today. Sudeep, anything from you, Sudeep? No, ma'am. I think you have covered it well. Actually, I'm facing a lot of uh, network issue. That's why I'm not okay. able to participate fully because number of times I just uh, got disconnected. Sure, sure. I can understand. Maybe internet is also celebrating Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, Varma sir, you there? We are done. So. I think you will have your class uh, 30 minutes after. Yes, ma'am, from 12. Yeah. Sure. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, 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 thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.